Welcome to the Fortified Life Podcast, where we learn how to develop a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. From the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. Here's our host, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, stewardship coach, and my husband, the man they call Mr. Fortified, Jason Davis. I'm your host, Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify. We are passionate on this platform, as you know, about developing a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. And I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, our guest this week is somebody that I've admired for a long time. And when I started the podcast, this was somebody that I always wanted to have on the show. And she is here with us today. Let me introduce her to you. She is a chief fire igniter, passionate storyteller, mentor, strategist, and bridge builder, Shay Bynes. She helps leaders become catalysts for transformation in their spheres of influence. Shay, it's great to have you on the show. It's good to be here. Honored that you asked me to join you today. Absolutely. Well, Shay, we know that God has graced you to be a part of many endeavors. And we know that in 2023, you just didn't wake up and do what you did. So kind of take us back a little bit uh, through your professional background, because I know there were some some inflection points that oh, uh, yeah. used to transition you. So just give us a rundown of that. Sure, sure. Okay, so professional background. I graduated college 1999 with a degree in computer science, started my corporate career at IBM Corporation as a software engineer. And so I was at IBM kind of moving up the ranks, did a bunch of stuff there. I had a lot of different jobs at IBM. Um, some in technology and some in kind of recruiting and all types of stuff. And so I was there for about a little over 10 years. Now, what happened was in 2009, I was writing out my goals in the beginning of the year. I always had a side business. So it was like I was a side business owner and then I had this full-time corporate career. Okay. And so in 2009, I was writing out my goals and I was doing what I did at that time, which was I would write out my plans, my goals, and then I'd ask the Lord to bless them. I didn't ask him his thoughts concerning any of it. But I was just like, Lord, please bless these plans. And for the first time, I heard him talk to me about what I was talking to him about. And he said, you're going to leave this job by June of 2010. And I knew it was God because that wasn't my thought. I was, I'm a strategist mm-hmm. and I had not strategized that. I, I, you know, I'm a planner and I had not planned that, you know, and so I knew that was the Lord. I wrote it down. And then for the next several months, I was increasingly uncomfortable in my career. And it was just like this consistent nudging. Like it was almost like the Lord's like, be prepared to go, be prepared <laughs> to go. Like I told you you're going. So I started getting so uncomfortable that, and it didn't make sense. Like on paper, I had a very well paid corporate career. And so in a small, side business income. And so I was like, this doesn't make any sense, but I created a list of things I thought I should do in order to actually be obedient to what the Lord was showing me. And I made this laundry list, didn't hit any of those things. I go into 2010, I'm at a business conference and I'm in the middle of the going to the last session. I was in my hotel room, getting ready to go to the last session of the conference. And I heard the Lord say, go. And it was like that. It was it might as well have been audible, even though it wasn't, right? And I knew what the go was about. I didn't know where I was going. I just knew I was supposed to go from that job. This was April, 2010. So I called my husband right away. and was like, babe, I, I, I you know, I got, <laughs> I got to go. God said, I got to go. And thank God he has a gift of faith. And so even though it made no sense in our household for me to leave a just under six figure paying corporate job, considering how much I was making in the business, which was probably maybe a couple grand a month at that time in our real estate investing business. He was like, if God said, go, go. Right. And so I got home and I called my boss and I said, like, I don't know how to tell you this, but I got to give my 30 days notice. And so sure enough, my last day at IBM was May 31st, 2010, one day before June, just like he said, wow. I didn't even make that connection until months later. So I leave my corporate career. Then I went into my full, I was in real estate investing was my side business. So I went into that full time. Okay. Now I still did not have this whole God cares about my business thing. God just shook me out of my job and I left. And so then I went to grind mode, trying to make things happen because now God's got me out here, you know, and I'm like, I got to make things happen now. And so I went to my grind mode in my real estate investing business and six months in, I call it my period of faithless action. After six months of grinding it out and making very little progress, even though I knew what I knew what I was doing and I had all the time in the world to do it now, the Lord says, 
are you done yet? Mm. And so, yes, I actually, I am done. And by the way, why did you call me out of my job in the first place? It was the Mm. first time to actually pay attention to why God would even call me out of the job. I was trying to do it all on my own. And so that began the adventure of actually kind of leaning into the Lord concerning work life. It's when I actually realized that he cared about what I was doing in business. Fast forward two years of doing my business, my real estate investing business. One of my real estate buddies, now we're in 2012, one of my real estate buddies says, hey, you know, I met this woman and I really felt like I'm supposed to connect the two of you. He connects us. That woman says, hey, I've got this client I really feel like I'm supposed to connect you to. She connects me to her. Her name's Antonina Gear. We meet. She lived in South Carolina. So we just met on the phone. We instantaneously had a connection. It was a God connection from the jump. And about eight weeks after we met, I said to her, I really feel like God had us meet for a specific reason. She goes, I've been feeling the same. And so I said, well, let's go pray and come back in a week and talk about it. She was a full-time employee with a part-time business, just like I used to be. But we prayed, came back, talked about some stuff. I'm like, no, 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 it's none of that. Let's pray and come back. We did this like three rounds. And then she says, God gave me these words and I put them in my journal. I don't know what they're for, what, what, you know, what they mean, what what it's about, but the words are kingdom driven entrepreneur. Mm. And when she said that, and that had happened months prior to her meeting me, she says those words to me. And I said, That's a community, it's a movement, and it starts with a book. Wow. Now, Jason, I didn't even know what a kingdom-driven entrepreneur was, and I didn't (laughs) even know what I I was talking about. That was the Holy Spirit. No idea what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I knew what a Christian business owner was, but Mm. I didn't know what a kingdom-driven entrepreneur was. And you couldn't Google kingdom-driven entrepreneur in 2012 and get stuff. We weren't talking about kingdom entrepreneurship like we are. So, you know, like we are so much now. There was lots of Christian business stuff, you know, but it was just like, what is this? So we had to sit with Jesus, like, what is this? And so it was me and an essential stranger who became a fast friend and sister who for the next several months were seeking the Lord about show us what a kingdom driven entrepreneur is. What is this? And how in the world are we writing a book about this? That doesn't make any sense, Lord, but okay. And what's this community and what's this movement? And sure enough, months later, we did write this book, which was crazy, but whatever. So we wrote the book, gave it away. And in the book, uh, we invited people to come into a Facebook group called Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. 2,000 people showed up into this Facebook group and we were like, Jesus, now what? <laughs> that is how we got to the word. I mean, now that was back in 2012. So we're mm-hmm. this is still almost 11 years ago. All that, all that stuff was happening 11 years ago. But that's how I started doing the work that I did. It was not my dream, my thought, my idea, nothing. It was God's dream placed in someone else's journal that then he divinely orchestrates me meeting for me to tell her what the thing is and then for us to start something and to learn what the actual phrase meant that he'd started us to, you know, lead a movement for. Mm. Highly unusual story. And for someone, I got to tell you, you guys heard that I went to school for computer science, right? And then I was so very logical and analytically minded. I was a project manager in my corporate career and then a program director. I was mitigating risk, you know, as a project (laughs) manager, counting up all the costs. And here I am on this wild and crazy adventure with God doing things that didn't make any sense to me whatsoever that I had absolutely no business doing other than it was his business. Wow. My goodness, Shay, there's, wow, there's multiple directions. We could go. <laughs> Where you want to go with that? <laughs> there, there was, there was two things that really stuck out. Yeah. When, when you realized, and, and I know people hear from God differently, but like, wow, God is a, he's speaking to me, but specifically about my work when when you had that moment shay what was what was that like because i I, at least from a personal experience i feel like there are times where we have these moments uh in the if the for the comic book marvel dc folks around we call them canon events oh this thing (laughs) happened you know was that me is that i don't know what was that like and what wisdom would you give when god is kind of speaking to people that vividly that way. Yeah. Well, I like I said, when I heard it, so it came that first thing, which was you're going to leave your job by June of 2010. Yeah. That came as a thought. Like mm-hmm. I had this thought that came that said, you're going to leave your job by June of 2010. Mm-hmm. At first, I was like, you're going to lose. I mean, so I'm, I'm hearing this <laughs> right. thought, you are going to leave your job by June of 2010. And the way I was able to quickly discern. That it was God, even though I didn't grow up in a church where we talked about hearing God's voice. I knew about Jesus. I knew about the Father. I did not know about the Holy Spirit growing up. Okay. Even though I did not have that background, 
it was clear to me that it was not my thought. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my idea. And so I did write it down, but then it was like, but as you can see, it took me a long time to like, because I'm I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that was God, but would God have me leave like this great paying job to go do who, what, no, what's what, what, what am I going to do when I leave? That doesn't make any sense. I don't have enough savings in my account. I don't, so I went into my logic, my logic and frankly, the wisdom I would give anyone who was thinking about leaving a job, have some things in place, grow this business on the side, like all the things that I would normally recommend. I'm like, God's nudging me consistently that I need to be prepared to leave. I couldn't shake it. I knew it was God just because I knew it wasn't me. And surely the enemy wasn't trying to talk to me about leaving my job. <laughs> so it was just like, I knew I knew that it was God. Now, yeah. you would ask the question about, you know, well, if someone is hearing from God, kind of how to kind of how to roll with that. Mm-hmm. To me, you notice that I didn't immediately just say, oh, time to quit my job. I'm yeah. going to leave. Now, thank he actually was so kind to say by June of 2010, right? Like right. it came to me with a time frame. But quite honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. If he hadn't said go to me in April, I don't think I would have left by June of 2010. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Okay. Because nothing on my list was done. I could, I could not, I could not shake the fact that there was a massive gap between what seemed to be wise and what I thought the Lord was saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I was still early in my walk with him. Mm -hmm. So now I can move. I have a lot more confidence and clarity now, but then I just, I didn't know that that was a new experience for me to have, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I just encourage those who are just like, I have these experiences and they might be newer in their relationship with God. It's okay to wrestle with them on it a little bit, right? To get understanding. Like you don't have to like jump off the cliff, right? It's just like, it's okay to sit with him when you're talking about some significant life change or something like that. If you're early in your relationship with the Holy Spirit specifically, it's like spend some time engaging, ask them some questions, <laughs> seek some clarity. It's okay to do that, right? And don't let people shame you. Delayed obedience, delayed <laughs> obedience is still disobedience. Right. Don't let people shame you. You yeah. go, you have to have your own relationship with God and grow with him. And he will help you to grow at, at that pace, right? The pace in which you mm-hmm. are drawing near to him and he draws near to you. Mm, that's good, Shay. That'll preach. <laughs> yeah, because folks try to shame you. Your right. delayed obedience was disobedience. Well, look, that's the first time I ever heard from God like that. What do you, you know what right. you want me to do, right? Yeah, and you said something key, Shay, that like I think about the, the scripture, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. You we're kind of talking about that wrestling. And I think if people are honest, uh, whether you're a, a minister or pastor or not, it, we wrestle, we, we do wrestle, not just against the enemy, like the word yes. says, but also those internal, like, I'm just, I don't know my own thoughts from a God thought or, or God, I know it was God, but I'm not really sure what to do or, or yeah. move on it. So I think, yeah. I think that's key is some things you do just wrestle with. And that's just part and, of And give yourself the you grace know. for that yeah. process to grow yeah. in him. Like I said, all these years down the road, I don't wrestle nearly as much as I had to wrestle then. But how did that come? Through intimacy with God. Yeah. Right? But back then, right. it was a completely different story, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, that's good. And so, Shay, the, the other piece to what you were talking about, so he's speaking to you, but then he's speaking yeah. to you about work. Yeah. As you know, in the days we're living in, you know, some people, they they talk to God on Sunday and then Monday through Saturday, I'm going to do my thing. And, and we right. end up compartmentalizing yes. our faith when we really just have one life. So a, a big part of that message, we'll get back to the kingdom driven entrepreneur piece yeah. in a second. But yeah. where does that compartmentalization come from? Like, why do we just have this tendency to do that? Like, oh, well, it's Sunday. I'll do this. And then we flip back to Monday and kind of act like, uh, you know, God, you've got the wife and the husband and the kids, but I've got this work thing. Yes. I Okay. So I can speak to this for myself. Mm-hmm. I believe that it's because I didn't grow up. It, my background wasn't, I didn't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So the idea of the Holy Spirit, who's here to lead and guide me in all areas of life. I kind of grew up with, I knew Jesus was my savior, 
Mm-hmm. And even the idea of him being my Lord, it's like, okay, I'll be obedient to him. Yeah. But I mean, that was, that was the context. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, and I didn't have any examples around me that were then saying, Hey, by the way, everything how was happening in church. So even when I did learn about the Holy spirit, everything was about what happened at church at the altar through the mm-hmm. Holy spirit. Okay. It wasn't about what happens when you go home. Right. And so since I had since I wasn't in the word for myself to glean that for myself and was reliant on others to teach me and I wasn't being taught that. Here's where we land. Right. Where where there's a it's easy to compartmentalize Mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, I'm going to live my life by the principles of God, period. Yeah. I'm going to live my life based off of principles, Mm -hmm. you know, and I love Jesus and I know he loves me and I'm going to live by, you know good Christian principled life, Mm -hmm. which is not the same as being led by the Holy spirit in business. Yeah. But it could mean that I, but when I was in business, I operated with integrity because I was operating off of the principles of God. I want to be a good Christian. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I will have sound Christian ethics as I operate in business. I will operate in excellence. I will operate with integrity and all of those things, but that's still not the same. Yeah. As being led, empowered, guided by the Holy Spirit. Two different things. Mm, Right. Oh, that might be a new t-shirt, Shane. Uh, (laughs) What does the t-shirt say? Intimacy and ethics. (laughs) (laughs) That might be a new one. I'm just saying. So it was like, so I was living a good Christian life, right? And so, but it was absolutely compartmentalized from the perspective that Not from the perspective that I didn't think that those principles carried on into my business life, but from the idea that God actually desired to be involved in it. That's, Mm. that's, that's different. That's different. Wow, that's good. Yeah. I think that's a perfect segue, Shay, to what you were talking about in the creation of kingdom driven Mm -hmm. entrepreneur. And it's like, wait a minute. So I've heard of like Christian business or Christian business owner, but what about Mm. kingdom driven entrepreneur? Talk about what the Holy Spirit gave you with yeah. that word and just how you all unpacked that. Yeah. So it actually happened in layers, mm-hmm. you know, um, when it, it was probably years before I actually said, this is what a kingdom, like, this is the breakdown of the definition of kingdom driven entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And the first layer was God said, was God showing us his desire to be for us to have intimacy with him, that he desired to lead us and guide us. So this whole idea of, of partnering with God, like working with God was mm-hmm. kind of like, the early context. It was like, okay, because we were learning, right? We were working with God to do the thing, yeah. right? And so we knew that he desired to be involved. We knew that he does that that he desired for us to have a kingdom impact in the world through our business. A handful of months later, we caught the with, you know, uh, it's this, okay, well, we're going to do this kind of with God. And so we caught that a little later and then some time later, this was probably well after Antonina, my co-founder, um, had left. Then uh, all of a sudden I was getting greater revelation of the kingdom. And then it was like one day it was just like, well, I, I didn't even look up the word driven. And so it was like, all right, well, let's really break this down. If if we're saying if driven means motivated and propelled, then we're saying that our entrepreneurial endeavors are mo- are motivated by seeing an increase of the kingdom of God through the work we're doing in the marketplace. And they're propelled forward by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm-hmm. right? And so, but that took years to be able to put that language to it because it was like, it was almost like things were being unveiled in pieces. Mm-hmm. And by the way, hear me, y'all. Sometimes God gives you something that you don't have the fullness of, but yet he still desires for you to lead and know that even though you will feel so unqualified to do so, there's so many people who haven't arrived at the point that you've arrived at. So there's mm-hmm. always somebody. So you have to show up authentically. Don't act like you know something that you don't know. But if you show up authentically, there's going to be all these people blessed by the point of where you've gotten to that they have not arrived yet. And mm-hmm. I learned that lesson actually uh, just really practically in the real estate business. Because I remember a friend of mine, uh, she used to, she she had raised like $29.9 million in private money to do real estate deals. But when she did her conference, she wanted me to come and speak to her folks. And I'd only done 500,000. And I'm mm-hmm. like, why are you going to have me come? You've done over $20 million. And she says, because you will be more believable to several other people in the room because oh. it'll seem more achievable because you're in the room. 
and that you don't seem so far off. It's already feels far off because they're at zero and you're at 500,000, but what a bigger gap for them to jump from zero to 20 million. That's why. And it was in that moment that it was like, ah, yes, Mm -hmm. have to appreciate the point where you're at because there's always somebody who hasn't reached that yet. Mm, That's good. Appreciate the point where you're at. Wow. Yeah. And just continue to grow. Yeah. The, I think I heard somebody say it this way. What is, uh, maybe familiar to you is amazing to others. Facts. <laughs> wow. It's true. And that, yeah. what a, I feel like that was almost a, a leadership principle nested it is. in there. Uh, Shay, it is. When, when she showed you that and then said, Hey, here's why, like, yeah, I'm at 20 million, but I don't want them to see, I want it to seem attainable. Yes. And so that's why I want you like, what a, what a moment. Yeah. In time for that. My goodness. Absolutely. And that was just like maybe a couple of years before kingdom driven entrepreneur, you know, came in my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's, but remembering that was very helpful because then I could say even just this, even six months that I've walked with the Lord is six months, the six months of that I've received of walking this thing out with the Lord is still six months more than somebody who, who is where I was that, you know, a year ago. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there's always somebody. And that's why we, we have to be, you know, focused on just doing the thing that God called us to do and not feel like we have to have our, you know, our 10,000 hours of expertise before we could share somebody, something with somebody. It's like, if God called you to it, the answer is yes and go do it, but just do it authentically from where you're at and continue mm-hmm. to grow. That oh. first book that we released that we did, because mm-hmm. it was a community and movement that started with a book. You can't even buy that book anymore. Seven oh, wow. years later, I fully revised the book. <laughs> and, and, and the entrepreneur, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur's Guide, Doing Business God's Way. Seven years later, fully revised the book. There was still some goodness from the first one, but I'd walked this thing out for years. Mm, right. All we had was like six to seven months of revelation at the first book. And then I had walking it out for seven years, right? Wow. But but people still were enjoying the book. In year three, year four, when I really wanted to rewrite that book, because I'm like, Lord, you've shown so much more. I want to rewrite this <laughs> I'm book. Learning, I'm no. learning. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, mm-hmm. no. And then he told me to write Grace Over Grind, the first Grace Over Grind, which was released in 2018. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to write, I wanted to rewrite the other ones. I'm like, Lord, there's such a gap between, you know, what I'm sharing now and what's in that book. But there were still people being blessed by that book. Why? Because they hadn't reached the point of that we had reached when we wrote the book. Mm. Wow. My I'm just goodness. saying. Wow. So Shay, yeah, kingdom driven entrepreneur, the Holy Spirit's given you this, you're, you're learning, you're unpacking it in real time. Right. But then, you know, you're working with your husband, there's the team is growing, you have a lot of people. Can you talk about, because I remember seeing kind of when this happened, yeah, that becoming the chief fire igniter and, and, and the, the organization starting to shift. So talk about that. You almost had a, another transition, and I'm sure you've had several, inside yeah. even what God is calling you to. So talk sure. about the, the essence of that title yeah. and how that's influencing what you're doing now. Gotcha. So the title is actually super old. That that title goes back to the very early time of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. And quick, quick story of how it came about. This was probably year about one year in. Okay. And the Lord had me. I was on a fast. We were trying to, trying to figure out what are we doing with this thing. I went on a fast, and the Lord had me do a a word study on the word fire. Mm. And so I found out through that that fire represented God's presence, His power, His His purity. Uh, his passion. Right. And so I'm writing these things. Out. I'm like, wow. And he's like, your call to ignite that and others who will demonstrate that in the marketplace. And so, and he's like, you're the chief fire igniter. Right. So mm. I grabbed hold of that. That was a God given name. I didn't make it up. It's cute, but God gave me that name about a year in to kingdom driven entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. So that, so that's the side. That's the story about that. But what you were asking about, which was this transition was in 20, the, toward the end of 2019, I was seeking God about kind of what's ahead. Uh And I was getting these visions where I was realizing that I wasn't in the CEO seat anymore. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, well, what are we doing, Lord? Because I mean, who's going to be the CEO? Um, I knew our COO wasn't going to be the CEO and we didn't have anyone else that we knew would be the CEO. And so I just kind of like sat with that. Okay, Lord, you're showing me this. Maybe I'm seeing three years out. Like, I don't know exactly what I'm seeing here. But as as the months kept going on, it was like, 
okay, I kept getting more and more visions of this. And I'm like, I got to the point where I was frustrated and I talked to uh, our, my dear, dear sister, who is our prophetic strategist. And I was like, what is going on? He keeps showing me this vision, but who's going to be the CEO, you know? And she just laughs and says, well, you know, your husband's been prepared to be the CEO. Mm. And I'm thinking, and I laughed. And so did the C, the COO. We both laugh because my husband had barely been in the company. Like my husband, we had just added him like a handful of months earlier, just because the Lord said, put him on the team. And so we just made him a mentor, but he has a whole other business, right? Mm. So he'd been a massage. He has been and continues to be a massage therapist with his own practice. It's been over 20 years. So it was just like, Phil. But then after I was done laughing, I was like, there actually is no one else who knows more about the heart of this thing than he, than him. He's wow. been walking with me, has been a source of wisdom, has been prayer since day one. <laughs> and so I was like, well, Lord, if that's what you do and tell your son. So basically <laughs> what happened <laughs> is, uh, thank God by his grace, he gave my husband a very vivid uh, symbolic dream that gave him all the answers he needed to know for him to make the shift to uh, become the CEO of Kingdom Driven LLC, which he did at the end of twenty. 20. And I'm telling you, you got to trust God. Listen, I said, tell your son, because how am I going to go to my husband and say, hey, so the Lord said, the Lord said that this company that your wife co-founded, I know you got your own business and all and dreams for that and everything, but God said, you're supposed to run it. Mm. <laughs> I didn't, I, I was like that. I don't think that's going to really go that great. So Lord, yeah. I need your help in making this known, like guide me through the process and illuminate truth for him so that this is great, a, a graceful transition. And he was he was faithful to do it. I mean, we were talking about the revelation of knowing it was him in March, and he started in November. So it was a wow. relatively quick transition. Wow. Yeah. It, you, there's something there, Shay, because I, I'm, I'm coming across more and more stories of husbands and wives working together. Yes. You kind of started to detail some of this, like, hey, I, he's your husband. But you also recognize he's a child of God. So in yes. your language, you said, hey, you're going to need to tell your son. Talk, talk to your son. How, how do I tell? And so I feel like that's some that's some wisdom there. But can you talk about working with a, a, a spouse? Because that's that's a polarizing topic these yes. days. And some people just, you know, especially when you start bringing in the secular perspective, oh, it can't right, be right. done, it shouldn't be done, all these extremes. But what would you what would you say and how um how you all work together and yeah. uh, obviously how God plays a role in that? Yeah, a, a huge role. <laughs> so one of the things that has been, I think, one of the most impactful things that my husband and I have done in our marriage. Uh, which supersedes even the question of us working together is that we have this, uh, we, this date once a week where we have lunch and we talk about all the things. So we talk about what's going on, family stuff. We talk about what's going on in his business, his massage practice, you know, before he was, um, you know, CEO, we talk about what was going on in kingdom driven entrepreneur. When we were leading a ministry at our children's ministry at church, we talk about that. We would, we would basically spend time every week to make sure that we are on the same page or can work through or wrestle through all the things that are of importance related to our entire lives. Mm. And we do that every week, almost without fail. The only time it fails is if I'm traveling to speak or something and we can't do it. But other than that, we do that every single week and we've been doing it for years, years wow. upon years upon years. So because we have that foundation of always talking about all the things, mm -hmm. When it came to this transition, uh, and us, even we worked together in our real estate investing business to an extent. He had his part and I had my part and stuff like that. But we were always like honoring the other person's gifts and their role that we've agreed upon that that person's going to have and also would be willing to hear the wisdom of the other. But ultimately, ultimately, it's like my husband would say, if you're, if you're the one called to make this particular decision in this business, I, he goes, I'm going to give you input, but if God put you in that position, then I'm going to honor, you know, that thing, right? Now, people will say, oh, that's tricky because he's in the head of the house. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> the Lord gave you an assignment. Right. And so I'm going to honor that assignment. But I also, and I also know that you honor me as your husband with the input that I give you, right? Mm -hmm. And so we already yeah. had this dynamic going on. 
I would give him input around his business, even though I'm not even in his business. I'm not, I'm not even a part of his business, but I could give him input and he could hear it and do what, what he was going to do with it. He would mm-hmm. do the same thing with Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. And I would hear it. And a lot of times he was right. And sometimes I didn't know he was right until like a year later or something. But there were signs where I'd be like, um, I'm not quite seeing that. But then later on, I would see it, right? But mm-hmm. he would give me the grace to walk through and not be like all offended because you didn't take my advice. Right. He's like, God gave you an assignment. And so he he allowed me to have that space. I honored him in the space that he has. And that's how we did it, right? Yeah. And so we did that for years. And so now once he became CEO of the company I co-founded, there was another stretch and another growth because he doesn't lead the same way that I lead. He has a completely yeah. different skill set than I have. He is a completely different CEO than I am. And so it, there's definitely been that process because now I'm the executive advisor. Mm-hmm. And so now I don't have decision-making responsibility. I have, I can give, I can advise you, but ultimately God has you in this position for you to be the final decision maker. Mm -hmm. And so that took some growth because Mm -hmm. I have to be okay with the fact that he moves at a different pace than I move. That just, it's just, we're very, very different. And so there was a year of just like learning how to like get in the pace of allowing him to be him and me s- and find my place and my footing. Cause the whole team's used to me being the leader. So it was like, we had to give ourselves grace in that process, but we were still, you best, best believe we we're still meeting every week and talking through things along with the, whatever business meetings we had to have. But we still maintain that week, that day of every week that we talk about all the things. It's just that now that he's the CEO, we have to talk about kingdom driven entrepreneur more than that <laughs> once a week. Right. But right. But, you know, but we do that. So communication has been everything, Jason. It's Mm. been everything. That's good, Shay. You basically gave a marriage seminar in just a few minutes. And I appreciate it as my wife and I, we've been married uh, a little over seven and a half years. So I'm loving just hearing this, especially hearing the woman's perspective. Uh, I know I appreciate it. And and folks, listeners, as you're listening to this, I bet you didn't know you were going to get a little marriage class. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> bonus <laughs> but Shay, it's but seriously just, the best thing so we've done powerful. in our marriage we've been married yeah. since how many years we've been married we got married in 99 so we we celebrated our 24th anniversary wait does that does that make sense 23 20, yeah it's our yeah. 24th anniversary this year mm-hmm. yeah wow and congrats on that just thank you thank longevity. you longevity we know and you know shay it's it's sad to say not not just in the world but also in the body of christ we we know some of the statistics yes out there so we definitely want to give honor to where yeah. honor is due because yeah. it gives that you talked about early on, just from a testimony perspective, like I didn't grow up with like, Hey, the Holy Spirit's your helper. And he's there. so in the same thing of, we don't, we don't have people that, Hey, I know someone married 15, 20, yes. 25, 30 years yeah. because then it, it affects, um, the hope and like, well, you know, I just, I wasn't around anybody that married, that's been married that long. And right. I guess it's just me and my wife just kind of floating along or me and my husband yeah. floating along by ourselves. So hearing, just hearing you say that that's encouraging in and yeah. of itself. Yeah, that's good. And I think the only other thing I want to add to uh, kind of round out that marriage conversation is the the role that God has in it. So even though I said communication is key, communication mm-hmm. is key, but so is listening and yielding to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So what I mean is when I might want to communicate something and the Holy Spirit says, hush your mouth, then I hush my mouth. And I allow God to do what God wants to do as opposed to me feeling like I need to make it happen through my communication. Yeah. Likewise, my husband says the same. He's like, he's like, I'll be talking to the Lord. I'm railing about you about something. And he's like, well, what about when you did X, Y, Z? He goes, every time I want to talk to the Lord about, about you, he talks to me about me. He goes literally <laughs> every time, right? So wow. we, So we both yield ourselves to God. In the midst of our communication, we yield ourselves to God so that we can have appropriate conversation in appropriate times and in appropriate ways. Let things go when it's time to let things go. Lean in when it's time to lean in. Even if it gets a little comfortable, I call it heated fellowship. Even when we have some of our heated (laughs) fellowship, sometimes it's like we gotta we gotta press through and then we get to the we get to the bottom of it. Because ultimately we both want the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's been key. So I want to make sure I add that because get. Because God being in the center of all of this is everything. Yeah, that might be another shirt, Shay. Heated fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a whole line by the time we're done. A whole line of shirts. I'm telling Jason. you. I'm telling you. you got to talk to your COO about. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Shay, you've used the word throughout the interview, um, grace. Yeah. And uh, you've kind of been foreshadowing this, but, and I want to talk about your book because it's the fifth, I believe fifth anniversary. You did a the fifth um, anniversary, fifth yeah. anniversary of yeah. grace over grind. Uh, yeah. So when God first gave you that topic to write about, yeah, um, go back and tell us where you were and then why you decided to release a fifth anniversary yeah. version. You mentioned with the other book, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, that um, God had you keep it where it was at the time yes. being. But then this one, it was like, you know what? This needs to be, this needs yeah. a, a revised, updated edition. Yeah. So why that with that message, Grace yeah. Over Grind? Yeah. So the Grace Over Grind message, the catalyst for that was me sitting in church and hearing my pastor um give a message on Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. This was just a handful of months after Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur started. And this is a scripture where Jesus is saying, come to me, all of those who are weary, heavy laden. He talks about how he will give you rest. And he talks about how his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's that scripture. But he read it in the message Bible and I had never heard it before. And it says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Mm. Work, uh, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. And when I heard that, it was like fire and water simultaneously. And it was like, Lord, show me that. I caught the with factor. Walk with you, work with you, keep company with you. Got it. Now show me what it looks like to work by the by an unforced rhythm of your grace. I need to know. So that's how it started. So this was just maybe six months after, six, eight months or so after Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur was launched. Okay. And so there began my journey to learn how to work by the power of God's grace. So after walking that out for some years, I had just been taking notes and I'd been sharing, like people can go back and listen to podcast history. They'll hear me talking about the concept well before the first book ever came out. I would talk about the concept. I'd talk about what God was teaching me. I'd talk about the experiences I was having. I was walking it out out loud. Mm -hmm. And then after having all these notes written about it, it, was like, okay, now it's time to write this book. And so I wrote that book. And the reason why I did the fifth anniversary expanded edition was for really a few reasons. One, because after I released that first one, I noticed a trend and the types of questions that people had. They'd say, mm. I love this book. I And they'd start implementing. And then I would find that people would ask the similar, the, like the same types of questions. They'd have the same types of hangups and, you know, those types of things. So I knew at some point, I didn't know when, but at some point I was going to, I was going to, you know, address those in another book. Right. So that was one reason. Second, I had grown so much and like, I'm right now living grace over grind level 8.0 living. Like mm -hmm. that's where I'm at right now. And I had grown so much over these several years of that message that there was more that I wanted to share. And then grace representing five representing grace. It just felt like a mm. really great time to celebrate the message yeah. by going ahead and adding all that I wanted to add to this message and to be able to answer some of the questions with some new chapters and answer some of the questions that I noticed that people who are like in our mentoring programs, you know, the people that I'm, I'm blessed to be able to get feedback in real time from uh, that see kind of what challenges they were having and walking it out. And so that's why I did the, the, um, the fifth anniversary expanded edition, which I'm super, super happy with. I mean, I, I loved the, I loved the first one. Uh, and I loved the feedback from the first phone, but this, this second one, it's just, I don't know. Is, is different. And I also worked with a developmental editor that time who really helped pull, like it, she helped me to communicate it in a way that's even stronger and more impactful than I was able to do in the first book, not having, you know, a developmental editor. And so I'm just really glad with how it's come out and I've been loving the feedback. It's been great. My goodness. And Shay, with all your books, I mean, folks, we'll have this in the show notes as well, but if you want Shay Bynes, Shay, where can they find all the books? And, and, yeah. and because how many now is it? Is it seven? I, I, I really, I, I should know because I'm like, do I count when I do a re release? Like, so I think it's been about 12, okay. I think, but they're not all available because if I do a full rewrite, I take it off. When I did the fifth anniversary expanded, I took the, the first one off, right? So I think I've written about 12 books by now, 12 or 13. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably only nine of them are available for sale. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. But yes, if you go, you can go to uh, shaybinds.com. Uh, you can go to graceovergrind.com. I would encourage you to start there. So in any of the books that I have, my encouragement to you is to start with Grace Over Grind. So I mm-hmm. would say start with going to graceovergrind.com. You can get that in Kindle audiobook. It's an hour and 51 minutes long you know, or, or grab the paperback, but I would recommend that as a starting point and don't just read it, like read it and implement. Like there's all these questions that say, ask Holy spirit, this, the goodness comes. I got to tell you, I've seen people write, share with me their notes from what they took from the book. that are just about as long as my chapters. So when you seek God, that makes that a very personalized experience. And I've just loved how God is meeting people exactly where they are through this book. So don't just read it, read it, do the exercises in the book and then walk that thing out. Mm. Folks, you heard it directly from the author. She said it in the auntie voice too. <laughs> Number one, read Grace Over Grind first. I don't care about the other 11 books. Read Grace Over Grind Read Grace first. Over Grind first, yes. <laughs> and listen, read the prompt. <laughs> yes, because honestly, it gives you a frame and a reference and a lifestyle that helps you in any other book that I've written. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's the fundamental lifestyle in which to embrace and work from. And it helps you to then fully receive what's in doing business God's way. It helps you fully receive what's in the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur's Guide to Goal Setting. It helps you fully receive, you know, other books. So it's just like, that's why I recommend that as a starting point. Mm, love it. Love it. Well, Shay, we're going to get ready to go. But before we do, you're doing so many exciting things. You know, we're coming kind of to the back uh, really the back half of 2023, but yeah. what are you excited about going into 2024? So one of the things that happened this year is um, I'm starting to see kind of the, the manifestations of something that God planted in my heart many years ago, which is around the nation of South Africa. Okay. And so we just started uh, the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Foundation Incorporated because we are about to spend a lot of resources, just time and I'm mean, mentoring and even financial investment and really growing this movement of kingdom-driven entrepreneurs in the nation of South Africa. And we see South Africa as a catalyst nation for what God desires to do in other nations within Africa. So I'm excited about our opportunity, even though we've always been global, Mm -hmm. we've we've been like 80% the United States, right? And then, and when you think about like currency exchange, we've outpriced ourselves from being able to serve South Africans just based off of currency, right? Mm -hmm. So God has shown us like, this is an area that I want you to focus in on and to really build, build people, build leaders, you know, real like culture capital that are there for kingdom driven entrepreneurship. So I'm excited about that. I mean, I'm just starting to mentor this month is my first month of beginning to mentor a group of South African entrepreneurs. And I'm excited about it. My goodness. I, that, just hearing you say that, Shay, just what what an impact. And God is always so amazing in, in, yeah, in, in able, and expanding the footprint. And uh, yeah. I already know there's, I hear about so many things God is doing in, yeah. in Africa. And it's almost like everybody descending on yeah. different parts of the continent and God. Yeah, is, that's yeah, right. We start, we're starting in Cape Town and Johannesburg. And the wild thing is, I know we got to go, but it was wild. And I want people to know, you never know what God's going to do with what, with, with your yes. When we went to South Africa and I'm at this church and I wasn't the speaker, my friend was the speaker, but he had introduced us, you know? Um, and so there was people who came to me afterwards. They're in South Africa. They live in South Africa and they come to me. I'm like, I've been listening to your podcast for years. Wow. And it's like, I am halfway around the world. And someone's saying they've been listening to this podcast. You just never know what God does with your yes and how and who it gets to reach. And so just say yes. Just say yes. Go do go do the thing, whatever that thing is. (laughs) Go do the darn thing. Go, go do the darn thing. I love it. Well, Shay, you have added so much value uh, to us today. You gave us uh, some some auntie notes. You gave a marriage <laughs> class. You gave yes. business advice. You talked about hearing from God. I mean, you want to talk about a foolproof uh, interview. That's what this <laughs> Uh, it didn't even feel like an interview. It just felt like she was on just stage. Just having a conversation. Just having a conversation. That's I right. Love that. So I can't thank you enough, Shay, Absolutely. for taking out time. Where can people go and, and follow you and connect with all that you're yeah. doing? Yeah, you can connect with me. I'm on social media, pretty easy to find. So you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn under Shay Bynes. And if you want to connect with Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, you can do that at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com. All right. Listen, folks, you know where to find her. Now, we'll have all this in the show notes as well. But Shay, thank you so much for hanging out with us on The Fortified Life. Absolutely. Good good to be with you today. Thanks for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Well, folks, you know how we 
end things. Don't compartmentalize your faith in the marketplace. And from the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. We'll see you next time on the Fortified Life Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Fortified Life Podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out fortifiedlifepodcast.com for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis's book, Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon. You're listening to Jules Live Worldwide Podcast.